The Samsung 24-inch monitor was discarded by the company after 8 years of continuous service. The screen backlight is defective. Whoa, did you see that? This is the input, one analog and one DVI digital. Menu and power touch technology button. And a ridiculous 50,000 to one contrast. That's what happens, you turn off the backlit after two seconds. The case is held in place only by plastic clips. menu button cable connector I have to figure out how to open these things and these are the fluorescent tubes wires the video interface and this is the power board it also contains the fluorescent tubes inverter And I suspect the problem is here, some bad capacitors forcing the output into protection. The culprit, it is easy to spot. And there's another one from famous brand Samyang, Samyang Chinese or Samsung when he was young and they called him Sam. Check out this printing, I'll come back to them later. The PCB is pretty scorched due to high currents and temperatures, but nothing to worry about. So I extract the capacitors. That's one. It's about to explode. Mm, 
There's two. They are in parallel by the looks of it. And that's the third. A dumpster diving for replacements. Let's put my 7 euros AliExpress ESR meter to the test and see how bad these capacitors got. 680 microfarads measured only 16 microfarads with an ESR of 52 ohms, which is horrible. This one is basically non-existent at only 31 picofarads. And this one also. How about my new old stock? Not bad for a 30 year old off the shelf replacement. The capacitor often bulge because their rated voltage is uh, pretty low. One uh, simple rule of thumb is to have minimum twice the output voltage printed on the capacitor. Let's put uh, them back into place. The ultimate test was a complete failure. I have image but no backlighting. Sadly the fluorescent lamps were damaged, so I search online for a replacement and I find those 5 euros LED strips and their adapter module. It's so super bright. This is zero volts for dimming, three volts for dimming, five volts for dimming. The higher the voltage, the higher the dimming. I'm going to use uh, this B dim, which is uh, 5 volts no signal, 3.4 volts signal, 
for uh, enable I'm going to use uh, this on off which is 0 volts when off and 2.5 when on don't rely solely on double adhesive because after a while it will dry and uh, your module will fall off and do all sort of short circuits, circuits that you don't want a magnet to keep the screws not to lose them This is the actual LCD. We wouldn't want any dust, any speck of dust. No fingerprints whatsoever. It's a delicate job. I have to lift this bloody metallic part. So, in my opinion, the electronic part, which at first seemed the most complicated, it actually is actually the simplest. The hard part is to get to the lamps, the CCFL FL lamps. Bloody lamps. Let's hope they stay there. Everything should fit so perfectly, then everything can go wrong. Everything. I'm going to clean every little speck of dust that I can see. Keep it up. 
check for the perfect alignment. The screen is upside down. Okay folks, moment of the truth. Oh yes, you bastard. Oh yeah. You see that? Let's put it together. I had to shave a little bit of plastic here because it uh, hits my module. So that's the final product and uh, I want to see how the menu controls work. Brightness and contrast. Brightness is at full. Actually by half around here I can see an increase of brightness. An increase and then a sudden decrease. So as the volume goes up the brightness actually goes down. I guess the color is a little bit bluish. This is the Samsung LED. And this one over here is uh, my BenQ LED. This is really white. And this is really blue. And these are the individual LEDs sometimes visible. It enters standby mode. Ah, check out my two revived monitors salvaged from the history recycle bin. This one is a little bit sick puppy here. The LCD suffered something, I don't know what. The other one looks fine, looking good. Colors a little bit bluish. 